hey guys, check out this logo. Uh, this is what we're going to make uh, next. Um, you're going to start using some of the uh, rectangles, or sorry, some of the squares in the golden ratio um, to do this particular uh, logo. Um, not terribly hard. Just have to kind of think your way through it a little bit. You can see you got a circle here, and then I've got a square that has been cut in half to make a triangle. Now, if this was rotated 45 degrees, so it was straight up and down square, you could tell that it's not the same size as this circle. But we know that it's using the golden ratio, so I can assume that this square that was cut in half is one size smaller than this circle. So, open up this uh, new document that I'm sending to you, and uh, we're going to get those items. So we're going to go over here first. I'm going to click on this circle, and then I'm going to copy and paste it. I have it over here. And then I'm going to go to the next square smaller, not the same size square, but the next square smaller. I'll go up to here. And I'll copy it. I'll start using the menu keyboards because that's what you guys have to use. And I'll paste it. And then I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. So I'm going to rotate this guy until I see that little pink line that tells me it's at 45 degrees. Now I need to chop it in half. Easiest way is use a rectangle tool and draw a box that's big enough until again you see that pink line show up right there. And then I'll select both of these items and go to our friend Mr. Pathfinder and we'll minus front. Now I'm going to move this into the circle and at this point you might want to go to view outline, go to the zoom tool I'm going to zoom in quite a bit until I get this guy lined up. Now this part you have to be careful on. I'm going to start moving him up and see it moves everything up. So I have to click on just him. Now I'll start moving up and as I'm moving up I'm going to hold down the shift button so it forces it to go straight up. I can't go to the side very easily. I'll go straight up until that point is right there. Now notice I didn't grab the anchor and stretch it to where it fits, because then we'll lose our proportion, and you don't want to do that. Back up a little bit, and it looks like it's lined up pretty well. So I'll go back to regular view. Okay, now if you look at this, you can see I have this circle is pretty big, and then it looks like it just keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Well, let's do that. Now that I have this lined up, I can start it off any size I want. If I select both items, go to Object, Group Them, hold down Shift, grab a corner and make it kind of big. I can start it off at any old size now because I know that my proportions between the circle and this triangle are correct. That's the important part. Now I can grab them. I'll go to Object, Transform, Scale, and I'll go Uniform of 68%. Oh, no, 61. 618, yeah, 1.618, or 61.8%. And then I'm going to hit copy. And then I'll command D a couple times. How many are there here? One, two, three, four, five. So I'll do this three more times. One, two, three. Okay. I select all of them, go to a line, and I'm going to make them align all to the bottom. Hey, that's looking pretty familiar. Does that look pretty similar? Yeah, I think so. How about that? Now you can see where these little sail marks are in. It looks like there's four of them here. I've got 
One, two, three, four. Yep, I've got my four right there. Now, if you want to, you can get your stroke to all be the same, you know, size. Notice how these are, oh boy, my computer just froze. There we go. Okay, get the stroke to all be the same size. And then you'll use your shape builder tool. And I'm literally just gonna hold down my option or alt key for Chromebook users and start taking out the stuff I don't want. Oh, I take out you. No, not you. I think I took out too much. One, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. It isn't quite there. See that? There's a leak. I have a leak. Okay. Well, there's a fix for this. So we'll go ahead and well, I'm glad I had a screw up because if you guys have a screw up, then this is how you can fix it. Okay, I'll go to view, go to outline, click on this guy. Let me zoom in real tight there. Look at that. Yep, didn't quite match it. So I'm going to drag this guy up. Oh, I got them both selected. There. Click on him. Drag them up. Oh, I haven't grouped. That's right. I have to ungroup. Okay. Now I'll drag this guy up while holding shift. And I'll make sure it's on there even to the point where it is even maybe barely crossing this line. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? Okay, now I'm going to go to object and I'll group. And then I'll go to Object, Transform, Scale, 61.8%, Copy, OK, select them all, go to Align, align them at the bottom, Shape Builder, and now, well, here, hang on a second. Let's get all the strokes all even. There we go. Now I go to my shape builder and I got son of a gun. It's still leaking over. Wow. How about that? And it looks like it's leaking over at this point. How is that happening? Well, I'll be darned. Look at that. Okay. I see what happened. I didn't back up enough from when I did my first shape builder. There we go. Yeah, you see that? It's like trimmed off weirdly. That means it trimmed off weirdly from here. Look at that. See that? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, this thing lied to me when I see what happened. Now, when this was rotated to 45 degrees, it wasn't truly 45 degrees. I guess. So let's try making it exact because I don't think you guys can hold down the shift button to make it 45 degrees, but I think you can do this transform and rotate 45 degrees and hit OK. Hopefully that will fix it. I'm going to zoom in. OK, that looks pretty good. Minus front. Okay, that's a nice little point. All right. All right, so let me align these two to the center of each other. 
just to make sure that they're aligned perfectly. Do that command Y and make sure that they are, oh, that guy's crossing over a little bit, which tells me, I wonder if this guy is lined over a little bit too much. Well, thank you for watching me while I'm doing this. I'm glad that I'm kind of messing up and figuring out ways to fix the mess up. The grief has taken forever just to back up. I think I got lost. Okay, there we go. Yep, that one's crossed over a little bit too much. So I'll click on him. I'll start to drag him down. Hold down shift. There. That should do it. We'll see anyway. Let's practice by doing Shape Builder now. Yes, there. See, now they're all separate. Maybe that's what you should do first. <laughs> do this much and then go straight to Shape Builder and see if this becomes its own thing, this becomes its own thing, and that becomes its own thing. If it does, then you know that these are intersected exactly right. Okay, now we know what to do. We'll go to Object and we'll group them. And then we'll transform scale. Copy and one, two, three. Align all of them to the bottom. Good deal. Get their strokes the same. Go to here. One, two, three, four. Awesome. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Okay. So before you go into all this, you want you can go and enlarge this by holding down shift. You want to make them all a little bit bigger, easier to work with. Hold down Option, and I'll start taking out what I meant to do at the very beginning, taking out what I don't want. All right, and there's my little logo. Awesome. Okay, so you're going to do this. I'm um, going to increase the stroke to about two points. Um, get the text on there. So we go to the text tool and let's use a nice slab font like this one is. This looks kind of like Arial. So let's go with Arial. And have you type that in there as soon as my fonts are loading. Wow, sorry, this is taking a while. And again, I'll have a page open for you to um, read all the instructions on this. And here we go, this is a refresher. Double click on this dot and it becomes dynamic text. Hold down shift, you can increase it accordingly. And I think you said, we said Arial probably an aerial bold. Type in A-R-I-A-L, bold. Ooh, it's not quite, the S is not right. Let's try another slab one, Tahoma. Ooh, there we go, it's Tahoma. Nope, the I is wrong. Dang. Well, you just pick one. Aerial Tahoma. Not Garamond. I had to stick with Ariel for now. That's fine. Put that right there. Oh, it's over the A. Okay. Put that right there. And uh, let's give it all the other things that we need. So you can delete that. Move this over here. I want you to complete it by giving me a blue background. So pick a nice blue. There we go. 
Let's see blue color. I swear I don't have that many programs running. All right. Um, go to object, arrange, send it to the back. We'll get this guy to be white with no stroke. Go to this guy, I'm going to hit object and lock it in place. All right. Grab him, make him white, and instead of blue, we'll go with the same blue background that you chose before. So if you want to be exact, you can go over to your swatches. Do, do, do. Oh, I just closed him. You can go to open swatch library, you can go to default, or you can go to nature and go to beach. That would be good. Definitely some beach kind of blues in here. Yeah. That looks good. And then if you go to unlock all, you can make this color a much cooler looking color. There we go, same tone. Much, much better. Or you can go with that blue color like that. Yeah, that looks cool. cool. Let me lock them in place and grab these guys. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick uh, object group. So if I click on just one of these, then it brings up all of them. And we'll go with a white fill, and we'll go with the same blue trim. Oh yeah, that looks great. Two point, yeah, three point maybe. Okay, now that's pretty cool. Um, however, it looks like I have a uh, joiner here. It's not supposed to be a joiner. He's supposed to be a goner. I don't know what this guy is. Or what was happening with my board, but definitely want some of these guys out of here. So, let's see what's going on with this. If I click on this guy, no, this guy. I see what happened. Yeah, this became just a path. And this became just a path. I know there's a way to fix this. I'm going to try to fix it in case you guys run into the same thing. So hang on a second. I'm going to figure this out. Okay, I figured it out. So what you have to do is when you're first building these um, with the Shape Builder, what you have to do is go in with the Shape Builder and click on each one of these individually like this then delete all the stuff that you don't need that forces these to become their own shapes um, so it's going to look a lot better it's going to be easier to control um, i may notice i have these little indentations where the stroke is kind of peeking in to the one that's above it you can fix that by forcing all of these to align to their 
um, oh, outside, inside, center. Well, it looks like we're going to have to make them a little bit smaller. Or we can separate them out a little bit. I would think that making them go to the inside would have fixed it. Well, that doesn't appear to be the case. So let me ungroup, try moving these guys around a little bit. Let's ungroup them. Oh, it's an actual, it happened from the shape builder. Okay, so be careful when you're doing that shape builder. Initially, you want to check to see if the triangles that were right here are poking in. So it might be a good idea when you're doing those triangles to go and do stroke and align the stroke to the inside of those triangles first. That is probably what my mistake was. But anyway, just give this a try. See what you can come up with. See what you have. Um, pretty easy little logo. Just happens to use um, the uh, squares along with the circles and uh, turn this in on the Turnitin page. Okay, talk to you guys later.